Yo, what's up, idiots? Idiot Mouse here, and welcome to the Arbalest meta. If you've been watching any Realm Royale on Twitch lately, you've probably noticed myself or others testing out a Headhunter Arbalest build, and I'm here today to tell you why the Arbalest is all the talk right now. Uh, the first thing I want to address is why now? Why wasn't Arbalest used in the last patch? And that's actually for a couple of reasons. First, it was largely overshadowed by the Longbow, and rightfully so. The Longbow, uh, before the nerf was an all-purpose weapon and hands down the best weapon in the game. The insanely quick drawback speed um, allowed you to be able to use it at close range, long range, mid range, and it could pretty much hold its own in any DPS race. Because of this, there was really no need to use the Arbalest. The longbow was just hands down better in every single scenario. Uh, secondly, the previous meta revolved around Ice Staff Mage with Ice Block and Ghost Walk and Weapon Swaps, and that was a burstier combo that really thrived at close range. Uh, because of this combo, Hunter really wanted to keep their distance from mages, otherwise they would stand virtually no chance. So in short, Arbalest basically would not have stood a chance against the main meta, which was the Ice Staff Mage. Uh, now that the Longbow drawback speed's been nerfed, and the Ice Staff and Weapon Swaps are nerfed, there's a little bit more room to breathe for other weapons to kind of surface themselves in the meta. Um, Sprinkle on top a 10% damage buff to Arbalest, and you've got a recipe for a potentially pretty competitive weapon. So what exactly makes the Arbalest good? Uh, the main thing, obviously the most obvious, is the damage. Uh, you're hitting for 1000 or 1100 damage depending on rarity uh, when you hit headshots. And that basically means it's a sniper with 6 bullets. However, that means the weapon is only as powerful as the user. If you cannot consistently flick and hit headshots all day long, then the weapon's probably not for you. It's a high skill cap weapon that rewards someone with good aim with insane results, but it's very punishing if and when you miss those shots. Even just hitting the body is very weak for this weapon in comparison to other weapons, so headshots are absolutely crucial. But doing some quick math, the legendary Arbalest can actually three shot someone from 3300 HP insanely quick. Top that off with the fact that most people aren't at full HP, and a couple of quick headshots at point blank turns into a quick chicken. Now, obviously the damage isn't the only reason to run this weapon. Uh, a very underrated portion of this weapon's power comes from its 100% accuracy, aka not having any bloom. Uh, this means you never have to aim down sights or ADS or scope your weapon in order to maintain perfect accuracy. This is important because when you do have to ADS, like for example with a slug, uh, your character movement slows down drastically, so having perfect accuracy means you can move pretty much as fast as you like and as freely as you like while still dishing out headshots. Being able to move freely is actually a lot more important than it sounds because it opens up opportunities for you to juke and outmaneuver your opponent through quick strafing and crouching. Being able to make your opponent miss even just a single axe can be fight winning. Not only that, but what are the two current best weapons on Mage and Assassin? The Stone Staff and Shredder, both of which are multi-projectile weapons. This means with being able to move freely, you can completely destroy their weapon's value by dodging multiple projectiles. The next question you're probably thinking is, well, why would I use this over the longbow when the longbow does more damage for body shots and even more for headshots? Well, I don't necessarily think the Arbalest is a better weapon overall, but based on the meta being Axe, Stone Staff, and Shredder, I do think the Arbalest might have a chance to outperform the longbow based on the playstyle. The playstyle of the longbow is to keep mid-range distance from opponents, slam them with the bow shot, and then push and finish them off with a secondary weapon. That secondary weapon is usually a slug rifle. Thing is, every single class you're fighting against thrives at close range, so by the time you're ready to gap close on them, even if you have a big HP advantage, you're opening yourself up to get annihilated close range. Now I'm not saying the longbow is bad whatsoever, it's insane. It's arguably the second best weapon in the game, next to the axe, and it's 100% better than the Arbalest at mid and long range. However, as the game goes on, and the circles get smaller, and sometimes the zones land on houses, I find myself enjoying the perks of the Arbalest more than the perks of the Longbow. Again, Longbow is still entirely viable, and still might even be optimal for Hunter, but it is interesting to discuss and test the possibilities of the Arbalest also being viable. Two different playstyles, both great results so far. So, how exactly would I run this build? The obvious thing is forging a guaranteed Arbalest with the Headhunter talent. That's going to be your bread and butter. Uh, I'm taking Flare over Blast Arrow, because I think Blast Arrow has anti-synergy with the Arbalest. 
you want to make sure your opponents are close to you so you can headshot them, not flying through the air. And not only that, uh, flare allows you to control the fight a little bit more because you can line up headshots and you apply pressure quickly. Uh, some people might think exaction with dodge roll is actually decent with arbalest, but the damage increase is only for one shot, so it's pretty negligible. Whereas withdraw allows you to line up headshots while not being too pressured. Um, additionally, withdraw is pretty good against sword warrior, which is kind of popular right now. Uh, if exaction worked like it did previously with 30% increase for three seconds, it would definitely be the play. But in the current state of the game, withdraw and desert shadow for the increased movement speed seems to be pretty good. Uh, I'm running Bok Bucks, that's pretty much the standard, and Vigor across all three classes, or all four classes. Uh, I'm using movement speed to synergize with the idea of moving quickly and freely, and so it stacks with withdraw. Uh, I know some people like to run uh, mount speed, but I think movement speed is probably better here. And I do usually run chicken speed on most other classes, but I'm running uh, incubation here to reduce the chicken timer by 5 seconds. And I'll explain that in a, in a couple of seconds, but I found that surviving early game with this build, you can really get away with having suboptimal abilities. And what I mean by that is you don't absolutely need a purple or better withdraw, and you don't necessarily need flare. Um, this build takes advantage of applying pressure quickly with headshots, so even things like ghost walk, barricade, ice block, soar, these are all viable alternatives to your class loadout. If I find a gray flare or withdraw early game, I'll take it. But again, it's not the end of the world if I don't forge my abilities right away compared to say mage where you really want to be forging that totem or assassin where you really want to be forging that conch bomb. This is important because it allows us to adjust our forge order. Uh, with this build, I always find myself forging weapons first and most of the time forging a rune second. I found that the Arbalest build power level actually goes up significantly with good runes, more significantly than other classes. Um, headshot damage, weapon damage, reload speed, lifesteal, these are all super powerful on the Arbalest build. And that's why I'm running Incubation instead of the Chicken Speed, because I find myself forging more runes, meaning there's a higher possibility of getting a 5 second timer. So that's the idea. Um, it's been working pretty well the last few days against decent players during Q snipes. It's lining up nicely against warriors, mages, assassins, and overall, it feels like a good loadout for someone who wants to play a more aggressive version of Hunter compared to the mid-rangey bow hunter. Um, it feels very rewarding, always hitting headshots, it's great for training your aim, and I really do look forward to kind of seeing how this meta shapes up and where the Arbalest build evolves. Um, I'm looking forward to trying it in a couple of scrims in the coming weeks, but yeah, that's pretty much the Arbalest build. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments on the Arbalest Hunter. I'll definitely be using it uh, during the weekend hot drop. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.